To be a podcast is Dan Frigolette. Part two of the episode begins in just a second here. I wanted to want to once again remind everybody that uh, we've been flagged on YouTube for including links to our guests' work. Um, it's a new flag, and it's put us in peril. We might lose that page. So please go to Dan Frigolette and subscribe there, and we'll continue to put the episodes there and give you all the content that you need and want. Uh, we're also available, of course, everywhere podcasts are for the audio version of this podcast. Thank you for listening and watching. Explain that. Yeah, explain that part of it. Is there, um, what part of you, is there another layer of, of sex attraction and sexuality when you're being filmed that you're tapping into? Um, cause you, you know, know, you're performing, you know, that they're capturing it. What, where's your head at? Like, are you thinking about the end product or how does it, how does it work in your head? Absolutely. That's something that, so there are people in the industry that are there to get paid to have sex with hot people. And I made the conscious decision of like, I actually really enjoy being behind camera. I like performing. I was a competitive cheerleader before this. Right. Um, I love being on stage, being watched, all of that. And so I genuinely enjoy making a beautiful and hot end product that people are going to want to jerk off to. So as long as the other guy is objectively attractive and there's chemistry, even sometimes when there's not chemistry, I can make something good happen. You fake it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, wait, have, wait, have you shown up on set and there was somebody who was not objectively attractive? I, um, hmm. I always know who I'm filming with before That's what I, was I show up yeah. on set. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, I don't think so. I think, ev so the people that cast me also know what I'm into. Right. And so they're not going to cast me with That's someone that courteous. I don't like. Yeah, absolutely. I That's love that. Interesting. <laughs> so the, the, there, there's a thing that's associated with porn and it's been there for a long time and, and I'd like to address it because this is, again, this is a good point. Um, the consent piece is huge, but the uh, and the and the and the courtesy piece is huge. But um, th there is a, a an old like idea that there is so much coercion associated with uh, porn that's being made, and and then even go a step further, like um, people think that like porn started from a place of like trafficking and all these sorts of things. So there is there is an idea, I think, in, in a lot of people's minds still that people are doing things on camera for money that they're not um, that they're that, that they wouldn't do otherwise. And so I think this is a good point to to discuss the fact that, like, everybody there is at will and having a good time. Yeah. I think that every industry has its, um, you know, high points and low points. Um, I think that definitely we've been through some questionable times, but, you know, I think the only extent that I've seen that go to is, um, someone was kind of more backed into a corner with career choices. And so they chose to, you know, do more OnlyFans or they don't really make it far in studio work. Um, but I have worked with at least one person that I can think of who was, you know, dealing with a lot of life changes and that was really their only choice. And so, you know, I can't speak for the straight side of things or anything other than my own experience, but there's, there are people who like me, who make the conscious decision to leave even healthy careers, like high earning careers to step into a completely different field because we actually enjoy the craft. And then there are people who still make the conscious decision to explore this industry, but it was really like porn or, you know, what else am I going to do? Right. Do you think that, that people thing. that are that they made the decision and then get in and then aren't enjoying themselves, do you think they A could last and B feel like they have no other choices? I don't think that those people last very long. 
they're not always very, um, they're not always the most fun and enjoyable scene partner. Yeah. And so, you know, that over time kind of weighs on anyone. Sure. If I had to work with people, um, if I had to work with, you know, gay for pay models all the time, or if I have to work with, um, you know, these models that we're talking about, um, all the time, even as someone who chose to enter this industry, um, and had other options that would weigh on me to the point yeah. where I wouldn't want to do it anymore. So Just, if every encounter they're walking into is like that, then yeah, they're not going to last. So you're intelligent. You're, you're easy to talk to. You're good at explaining things to me. Why is this gay for pay thing? Such a stigma. What's going on? I understand the idea that like, and maybe this is the coercion thing. It's like somebody decided there was more money in going gay side. And that's a straight person, you know, with this gay for pay, but there seems to be a lot of tiptoeing around this phrase. I want to know why, and I want to know how we feel about it, how we're supposed to feel about it. Yeah. So, um, you can't hear that train, can you? I can't hear that train, but that's fine. I'm happy with that. With okay. The, you, you live right next to a, a Birmingham train station. I'm happy with that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, I think that I actually know that my phone stopped recording. Okay. I still got, I still got this, I still got this version and it'll, um, you probably, you're probably running out of space. I think that's what happened. I just restarted it. Cool. Um, so, you know, a lot of the, when you say coercion, what do you mean? Why is gay for pay a bad word? That's not a word. Why is this, why is this, why is it such a negative phrase to people right now? I don't think that it matters to a lot of the consumers just because there's been such an obsession with straight guys for so long. Um, I think as we're, you know, kind of building more confidence as a community and self-awareness of our sexuality and everything that we're less likely to be drawn in by people who aren't attracted to us. Um, and so from a consumer standpoint, they're starting to see that and kind of shift away from gay for pay. So it's super secretive now who in the industry is gay for pay. Um, some of the top performing, you know, models are gay for pay right now. Um, so um, from a model standpoint, um, I have kind of on the down low avoided as much as possible working with people I know are gay for pay. Um, just because of all of the bad experiences that I've heard from other models. So, I mean, I've never been attracted to anyone who's not attracted to me one. So straight men are, you know, out of the question altogether. Yeah. Um, but just the horror stories I've heard from other models who have had to go through a whole shoot day with a straight guy who, you know, needs to look at their phone at straight porn for I see. every two thing, minutes and then come back. Yeah. Right. And so that's a whole, that's a, that's a horror story because it demoralizes the person who's also in the scene or it's a horror story. Cause it's literally like, this guy's got to go over here. He like, because I know the big thing is like you're in porn, you got to keep your dick hard. That's the whole deal. If yeah. You, if you can't do it, you can't do it. So is it is it more that like you're making it harder, you're making the scene harder, or is it also like why am I bothering to fuck somebody who's not mm -hmm. into me? Right. At oh. that point, you're just doing it for a check. My phone stopped again. At that point, you're just doing it for a check, and the checks aren't that fat anymore. Funny. So, it's meh. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I, 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 I like where we're at and I like what you said about the community and then I really wanted to hear your, your, your perspective out. And again, I, I like the way that you, that you, that your brain works and, and how you put the thoughts together. Um, but then to go backwards and to go, um, like, like caveman, isn't it fun to fuck somebody we're not supposed to? Isn't that fun too? Hmm. Wasn't that kind of the yes? Wasn't that the fun part of 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 straight men getting fucked by gay men? Wasn't that kind of fun um, that it was like it was naughty? So, yeah, maybe I guess that's the appeal to other people. I've 
I've never experienced that attraction myself. Yeah. So it's like, if you don't, if you're not into me, I know what I have to offer. If you're not into that, then meh, I'll find someone who does want it. And I'm total, I'm totally with you on that thing. Um, yeah. Let me add this to the, to the chowder. Um, it occurred to me recently, um, that I, I think a good portion of like the world doesn't get to fuck who they want to fuck. Um, and there's like some version of like descaling, settling, or like, um, like, like, like accepting less. So it makes, it makes it a, um, a hairier conversation, I think, because I think everyone, um, kind of understands to some degree, like mm -hmm. not exactly getting what they want sexually. Yeah. Um, but I do like the, the function that, we're talking about a community where all we're, we're aiming for is acceptance. And, and now we're talking about all communities, all sexual communities. And so the more we want and ask for acceptance and then get it and equality and then get it um, and then cherish it, then we do. We do remove this this thing where it's like, why are you in this industry? I would rather just watch two people who, who are hot, who are attracted to each other, do the thing that they're supposed to do. That's yeah. hotter. Right. And like I said before, we're selling a fantasy. Right. And so if the final edit looks like we were attracted to each other, it doesn't matter. Right. But we know everything that goes on in the eight to 10 hours it took to make that 40 minute movie. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it weighs on us a lot. It, that's really the gist of it. And then also, you know, there's an argument that should straight people be able to profit off of us even for that right it's like it's all. like um <laughs> it's like it's like uh sexual appropriation in a way right yeah oh. absolutely yeah so that's right so i think th i think those are the things i think you covered all the things good um, <laughs> that, that are floating around in my head um so that's good competitive cheerleading i didn't want i didn't want to miss this so <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Um, what does that mean? Um, at what level? Like at what age group? Is this is like this is like a thing that has to happen like starting in high school earlier? Like what's the? So you really age out at about nineteen. Age out. That's the word mm -hmm. I wanted to say before for porn performers, and I love yeah. that we're getting to the place where there's no aging out. Nineteen is aging out of cheerleading. Yes, competitive cheerleading, not college. So there are some teams that do go over that age, but really by the time you get to that point in that sport, you're done. Like your body is done. Really? I mean, I myself have so many injuries that I still deal with because of competitive cheer. Oh, shit. Um, but so what's your role? The only thing I know about cheerleading is that there are flyers. That's literally the only thing yes. I know is that there are some women who are small enough to get thrown in the air. Are there male flyers? Is that a thing? There yet? are. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. What size do you have to be to be a male flyer? Because everything is everything in sports like that is literally like if you're six foot eight, you're a forward. If you're you know what I mean that kind of thing. So yeah. what 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 size do you have to be to be a male flyer? Um. Oh gosh, it really depends on your team. So. I would say male flyers were never any bigger than me. I mean, okay. I'm about 145, six. Um, now, that's about what can be thrown. Yes, that's about what can be thrown in the air. Is that what you were gonna say? That's about all that can be. I mean, <laughs> Toss gracefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, were you a flyer? Were you a male flyer? No, I was always a base. Okay. So I was the one throwing people up. Yeah. Um, and was there like a, like a, like a height restriction to that? Like, cause it doesn't, it, the, 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 um, what's the word I want the, not the fit, I guess the physics, you yeah, know, the physics doesn't work if you are on one side and the guy on the other side is, is six, five, just like, yeah. just like a, a porn scene. So you had yeah. to have a bunch of use to be able to pull it off in a, in a way that looks good and, and, and is like geometrically sound. Right. Yeah. So our flyers, uh, all through, you know, all-star cheer, competitive cheer, they weren't any bigger than like five foot. I don't think they felt any heavier than 110, 120. Um, Cause that's just what everyone could throw. Right. So there were stunts that 
I was the back spot and I was the only one holding the actual stunt up, but we technically had to have three people there, but you know, they just couldn't hold this person up and handle the stunt. Yeah. Um, I always got the bad flyers because of that, but you were, so you were, you were abnormally strong compared to people in your peers. So you were getting, um, you, because you were such a good base, you would get less sturdy. Whoever's up there, the flyers. Yeah. Yeah. Is that fair? I, um, you're saying I let absolutely. Yeah. I left a few bruises on their legs. Okay. Um, just cause I mean, they wouldn't lock something out. So I'm like, I'm going to lock that out for you. And you can fix, you can fix it if you're good on the bottom. Yes. If you're a base. Yeah. And some of the best flyers that I've ever worked with weighed, you know, a third or more than that flyer. Yeah. But because they could handle their weight and actually right. do their job, they felt like they were lighter. Right. Right. So it's, yeah, it's a lot of that. So does it go both ways? If you're, if you're like a really good flyer, can, can you, um, uh, um, like counteract a bad base? Um, or is maybe. the base really in the yeah. power position in that way? I think so. I think as a flyer, there's only so much you can do uh, because you're having to, you know, know what that base is going to do or what that base is supposed to do. And you're supposed to anticipate it. Yeah. That's really that relationship right there. And so if it, if there's a bad base and you can't anticipate what they're going to do, then yeah, you can't throw that stunt. Yeah. And how many, how, how working up to a show, how many people are getting dropped? Um, I never dropped anyone with a co-ed stunt, which is just a base and a flyer, just two people. Yeah. I never dropped anyone like that. Um, we dropped while we were running our full routine, we dropped someone twice, I think. And that's just cause we weren't quite ready yet. And you know, something happened that was off count and we weren't there to really catch anymore, but they were wow. still up in the air, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, the, you're trained to catch them no matter what. Yeah. So because of that, I had a girl break her arm over my head. I on had, your head? On my head. Like the flyer was coming down. Yeah. And she reached over my head to catch her just because it's instinct at that point. To catch somebody and else. She sat the flyer sat on her arm on top of my head uh, and it broke her arm. I see on my head. So cause broke, it was, cause it was like a fulcrum. Yeah. You right. Snapped it off. I see. I, uh, I broke my nose three times. Oh, this I was going to ask you broken noses. Cause we were coming down on top of you. Yep. I you break um, your nose in competition. Can you still make it look good? And then do you just play it out? You just play it out. You're just bleeding. And you just, or if you drop somebody in competition, you just stop everything. If, if we're on stage, I'm yeah. going to go and I know where I need to be, yeah. even if I can't see it. Yeah. So the times that I've broken my nose, there were, you know, against my own will, there were tears, there were, it's just things are blurry for a minute. Yeah. yeah. And so like mentally I'm fine, like I'm ready to go, but right. physically I can't because I can't see. Right. So I think as long as I can see, I'm, or as long as I'm, Able to run, I'm good. So you didn't, you <laughs> I was break, good. So you didn't break your nose in competition? No, never in competition. Got it. I it was only makes, practice. I guess that makes sense. And I guess it's that. not, yeah. yeah, I guess it's not really uh, feasible that you would, or you shouldn't be there if you're still breaking people's noses during no. competition. <laughs> you're not ready. That show's no. not ready. What, how, what, but, does it take uh, to, what does it take to, to put a, a routine together and how long is a, is a routine? Uh, routines usually lasted two and a half minutes to three minutes. Um, and a good team, I would say should be able to run that routine in, I want to say like, if we're pushing it two to three months, months, no, it's crazy. So you should be able to run that perfectly in two to three months, months. That's crazy. So yeah. how many times do you run it in a day? Um, or, or is that not how it works? You wouldn't run it. You wouldn't just run the two minutes. You're working on parts of it the whole time. 
We're awesome? working on parts of it to get up to the point. Well, so each practice we would either at least mark the whole thing, which is just running through the movements, or we would go full out. Yeah. And leading up to competitions, that week or two up to that competition, um, we were just running the routine for the full hour over and over and over. And what's so, your like director, conductor, chore- is choreographer the same word? What's what's that person called? That's like watching coach. and decides coach. Okay. And yeah, just a coach. Where, and you're, they're deciding where the holes are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we actually, um, I probably shouldn't say the, you know, company that I worked with with yeah. that, but um, it's a pretty big competitive cheer is huge in the South. It's like sure. they're like beauty pageants. Sure, um, you've seen toddlers and tiar- uh, toddlers tiaras. Um, it's like that, but yeah, cheer and a lot more physical. Right. Honey boo boo, the whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lots of those. So <laughs> we. Um, we would really go to, there was a, a, there were a few days where we would all go and work with professional choreographers and then get the routine down, at least on video. So we would all know what we needed to do. And then we okay. would go back to our individual gyms and run it until we get it. It's basically okay. that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I don't know how to ask this without it sounding, um, you're good. Bad. Just ask it. <laughs> Bad. Um, what is fun about cheer? Why? Why was this a thing that you were involved in? And how did it, how did you, um, how did you like find it? And then and then what's like the, what's the thing that's so exciting about it from your perspective? So, I sought out actually a um, one of those gyms where you can actually do gymnastics, but there's nothing in the South. I don't even think Atlanta has one where you can just go as a cis man and do gymnast things like Olympic yeah. gymnastics, that kind of thing. Um, it's just not here. And so the next best thing is competitive cheer. Okay. So I wanted to do gymnastics. I got into competitive cheer instead. And then from there, I really just got obsessed with, you know, performing, being on stage, um, and then that just a different adrenaline somehow and... translated into porn. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. There's a physicality to it. You trust your body. That becomes the thing. Uh, yeah. You being presentable, you being attractive, you being physically, um, uh, you know, your body being attractive, just uh, like, uh, you know, and the rest of you, that's all, that's all, that all kind of makes sense. I mean, that's all, that's all that's in line. Yeah. That's in line. I'm a comedian. I was like, and at one point I was like looking at like, um, the things about being a comedian, they lined up pretty, pretty much with porn because a lot of people get into comedy to have sex too. So it's like, you know, and people, <laughs> performers like become good at whatever to get laid. That's like, that's like what we've been men specifically. That's what we've been doing for a long time. Like we just get good at guitar. We get good at singing. We get karaoke. We good at whatever to get laid. It's like a thing. It's like, cause we're not, men are not, uh, men are not generally interesting enough. And this is, this is, this is my straight boy perspective, but men are not interesting enough. So we, we have to like bring more to the table based on competition. Yeah. And so we decided that we had to do more things. Yeah. Like be performers. Interesting. Which, which you can do that. So, so if you're a performer and you're, and you're having sex and you're and you're, and you're like getting the adrenaline of the stage thing and you're getting sort of like uh, notoriety. That's, that's pretty good. And you're getting paid. Yeah. That's great. Paid to do what you love is great. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so d- you aged out and did you go to college and then do college cheer or were you, that was, that was it. So by the time I got to where I was going to, I mean, cause you know, it's Alabama. We have uh university of Alabama here. Yeah. Um, their cheer program is huge. I mean, it's God, one of the best. And so as far as college cheer goes, sideline. Okay, so cheer, why is that separate? Why is uh, competitive cheer and college cheer separate? In competitive cheer, you don't do sideline. Okay. You don't do, I, I've never been on a football field. So to be on the cheer team in college, you're still doing the same stuff. You do competitions, you go against the other colleges, you have your own thing going on, but also go stand by the football team. Yes, I see. I didn't know yeah. there was that other side to to all the cheerleaders that I was seeing in in college that they had yeah. a whole other regimen that they're doing full time. They end up know. at some of the same competitions that uh, we do. 
Interesting. There's a huge one in Orlando that college and all-star teams all go to. Yeah, I Crazy. think I was trying. I was trying to get a hosting job at one of these ones. It's yeah, very, it's yeah, a yeah. very hard thing to break into. Yeah, um, <laughs> actually, with my little knowledge, I'm like, what's that? A flyer? They're like, you have to <laughs> please leave. <laughs> you learn quick, but <laughs> I. So at that point where I was starting to work with those college teams because I worked with their cheer team a good yeah. bit, um, I was so physically like my body couldn't do it. I was so physically injured. What injuries point, did you did you receive? How where are you broken? I um, my neck is compressed. The vertebrae through there have a degenerative disc in my lower back. It's like ten years worth of damage from a few years of cheer. Um, my hips are out of line. Um, this knee sometimes doesn't work right. My nose, I broke it three times. Um, wrist injury, like everything. Yeah. We had in my last year cheering. On my team, we had at least two or three ACL tears. Wow. Um, I had the girl break her arm over my head. Yeah. That happened. What's not broken on your body? Um, oh God. I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, hoping, I do porn. I was, so. just hoping, I was just hoping you were going to say my dick. That's what I was really hoping for. I, that, I mean, <laughs> well, that works. Yeah, that for sure works. My ass is good. I mean, right. the things that work for porn. Yeah. We're good. Do you, uh, do you find uh, maybe, and maybe you can remove yourself, uh, but, uh, so I'll just ask it this way. Do you find that, uh, most people that are involved in porn are using, uh, performance enhancing dick drugs most. So, I mean, it's an eight hour shoot day, so it's not uncommon, Yeah, but a lot of guys are, you know, good to go. Okay. Yeah. I like your answers. And I love working um, with them. So what's the best way for us to support you? What's the best way for us to buy your porn? What's the best way to follow you and do all the things? I have to, I have to, uh, here's the disclaimer. Um, now, YouTube has figured out that if, uh, if I put a link in the, co in the, in the description of the video, um, and that leads anywhere down the line to uh, nudity, it will not allow it. So uh, um, the YouTube account. Uh, that you guys watch these videos on has been flagged twice in a um, in a in a three week period, and so we I might lose the entire YouTube account. I want to let everybody know, um, so to follow us again if we lose it. Um, but as a result, I can't put links in the uh, description, so we're going to do them here. We're going to talk about them. Um, but please, uh, where do we where do we follow you? How do we pay for your porn? And what's the best ways to uh, support you? So. Um I, well, so I'm starting to produce a lot more, I wouldn't say a lot more, just raunchier stuff. I can't post anything public or fisting or fetishy on OnlyFans. So just right. for fans is the, sorry? You cannot because of your fan base or you cannot because there's a restriction on OnlyFans? Oh, there's a restriction. This was a whole thing. Maybe, oh, I didn't know this. Please explain this. It wasn't last October, but I want to say the October before last, it was that. Um, I remember I was in New York when this happened. And so I couldn't transfer everything over fast enough. Right. Um, they, they, they did, you know, we, they did the thing. They're like, Hey, we're going to do funding. We can't give, we can't get money if we're, if we're, uh, nudity, sex based, whatever, whatever. So they freaked us all out. Right. So yeah, I guess you remember that part. Um, there's still, they backed up on that, but they updated their acceptable use policy to where it doesn't really accept anything that's not vanilla. And okay. so, well, I mean, I, so I need I need a clear description of that word because I think uh, people are throwing around this word, especially on the on the straight side, and and, and it's 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 borderline offensive the way they're doing. They're like, oh, are you into that vanilla stuff? So <laughs> I, I need I need a closer description, and then let's talk specifically maybe about what is allowed and what isn't allowed. So I would say your normal run of the mill just fucking is fine. Um, two people or more, as long as they're tagged. Okay. So that's fine too. But, um, I know people who have had videos taken down because of like pop, not only poppers sitting on a side table, but you can see the reflection of in like a picture of poppers sitting off frame so simulated dr uh, drug use like drug drug paraphernalia that's that's a problem yes okay um but with poppers being so popular in the gay community it's like what the hell what a fun so <laughs> they don't allow uh 
that by any means, even if something looks like poppers, we have to be careful about that. Interesting. Yeah. Um, anything that veers into any kind of fetishes. So fisting is a hard no. Um, Devin Franco, I remember um, we talked about, he had a lot of stuff taken down. I heard I mean, outdoor was a no-no now too. Anywhere where you could possibly get caught. So I've made a video in like a local park where there's a hiking trail and I had to write the description like, oh, went to my grandparents' land, private property, no one was around. That's not the truth, but it kept the video up. Right. Because I'm not, there's no, you know, there's no reasonable way for me to get caught right. if I'm on private property. Right. So, and also it would have been, it would have like somewhat interrupted or changed the video if you were. Oh, you mean, right. oh, you mean in your description, in your private, right? Yes, yeah, 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 um, in my description. So, oh God, if I had gotten caught. But, um, so yeah, anything outdoor, anything where you could even be veering into something illegal, they shut it down, take it down, whatever. I had a video taken down with Max Connor where I had flown to New York just to work with him. We uh, ended up with two finished products and I posted it on OnlyFans twice. One of them, they took it down twice. Email arguments with the customer what's service the people. What's the blowback when they take it down? They just take it down. They're not threatening to, to mess up your account. They're not giving you flags that are permanent. They're just taking it down and demonetizing so, it. They, they'll take it down completely. Um, it didn't count as a strike on my account, but they would not give me a reason for why they took it down. We're so, yeah, now we're in this space where um, these social media platforms that we've um, begged to be on and tried to be a part of have stopped giving us reasons. Right. For removing content. The runaround that I got was um, there's a separate department from what That's who I favorite. was contacting and they make the decisions and they have that information, but you can't contact them directly. Right. And I can't reach out to them That's as a my customer favorite. service rep. Yeah. Like what, then what can you do? That's my favorite. <laughs> That's like, and that was like, that happened in, uh, um, that happened like yesterday to something we were doing. It's like some New York shit. Like they, we were bringing, we were bringing boxes in the front of a hotel in New York. And they got to bring them, we got to bring them in the back. And so we go in the back and there's no way to put them on a cart. And then they're like, and then they, um, and then we asked about the thing and the guy was like, oh, that's not my, that's not my department. So that we've made it so that people are like, oh, I'm only in charge of one thing, this phone call that I'm on right now and answering things to you, but I'm not in charge of anything else. I'm yeah. only in charge of the left sock. If you want, if you want the right sock, you go talk to the right sock guy. And that's, right. that's such a beautiful way to just make it so that nobody can ever, uh, get, get answers. Um, yeah. It's criminal. And I mean, I, I know the owners of the, the other platforms that I'm on and I know that they are sex workers. They are, they have people that are sex workers working in their companies this and is important. OnlyFans is not that at all. They don't want us there. They just want the money. It's well, and, the thing they're, they're gay for pay. Right. Exactly. OnlyFans is gay. Perfect for example. Pay. <laughs> no, it is. It really is. I was working with these. I was working with this. I was working at an NFT festival all week, and I was working with these uh, famous graffiti artists, and they were like really talking about how like people try to open paint shops that were not part of the community, and like the graffiti artists won't go there. If you want to own a paint shop, you had to, you had to have like done graffiti for forty years, and then you sell spray paint now because uh, you're like the guy who like is like famous. And yeah. I think more businesses should be like that. I really do. I think I think that that makes it more um, understanding for things like that, and and to be yeah. able to um, have like I don't know, it's that for us by us thing, that FUBU thing, you know, mm -hmm. that notion that like you know what community cares about itself more than the the community that you're a part of, right? Um, so yeah, I like that. I like that function. So wait, so what are the other ones? What are the places that you are, that you're set up that are, that are, um, that are run by sex workers that we, uh, want to give you money through? So, um, just for fans, I actually love, um, and it has all the same content that OnlyFans ends up having. Um, OnlyFans just ends up being, I mean, it's my more popular platform. So I interact with people a they, lot more. They got on all that. the news. Yeah. They got all the yeah. news and they got all the things. Yeah. Um, I'm on top fan vids as well. That's, uh, Trenton's site. 
And so I have, that's really, that's more of one that, you know, you pay one subscription and you see a lot of other creators content yeah. all at once. So you're paying a little bit more than one subscription, but or you're you seeing mine. Platform. Sorry. You pay for the platform, not for not, not person to person. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So there are at least, I mean, I want to say 20 to 30 other performers who yeah. are well established and worth paying for. It's not like you're seeing, you know, right. people you've never heard of before. And I don't want to say daunting because people get offended when you use that word, but it is, it, it's, 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 it's hard. And it's, uh, um, it's, a uh, um, it's like a, like a, spreadsheet nightmare to like figure out on only fans who you're supporting when they're changing the fees who you want to give money to what you're doing so you know and you're you're dealing with that thing it's like you're you're, you're now you're you're like pay-per-viewing on one person and you want to mm -hmm. support that person um but it does get hard because now you've now you've spread yourself thin accidentally yeah and um and so this this uh you know we're a place where everybody is um, and you can get multiple people. I, I, I like that as the as the function of of this process because we've gone way past the point where um, there was a point where we were all pretending like porn was free, and that was yeah. that was a bad place. And now at least everybody's like, no, we're paying for a porn. We pay for everything on the yeah. phone. We're doing that now. We pay for the person that we like. If you pay, if you like your performers, pay for your performers. That's a no brainer. Yeah. I mean, someone is always paying for your porn. Yeah, and pick up your own damn check. That's a good way to say it. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. You should just have this podcast. Um, <laughs> okay. What other things should we look forward to? Wait, so the, wait, so it's uh, just, just the, just for fans. It's the ones you'll, uh, uh, you'll give me those links. What other way, what's the fastest way to, to get all those things, find the, all those things from you. Just grant Ducati.com. Perfect. Um, It'll lead you straight to all those links. Perfect. What else are you working on? What are you, what are you excited about that's coming up? Uh, what other things can we, you said, you said you're coming outside of the vanilla realm a little bit. Yeah. So I'm, slowly venturing out of it. I don't think I'm going to go much further than fisting unless it's for a custom video anytime soon. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I have, um, actually it's a collaboration between hot house and raging stallion, um, scrum Two. So the, the first one was really popular. Uh, it's, you know, the concept of the second one is team hot house and team raging stallion. And we're all just fucking, <laughs> it's a bunch of locker room scenes. It's I'm a mascot in one of the scenes. It's everything is super this, hot. I saw this on your Instagram. Are you oh violating? Are you violating any college's um, code of conduct by wearing this this head? I don't think it belongs to any it's a, specific. It's not. It's not. Okay, so it's just a mock. Yeah, head. and it's and it's uh, and it's. I'll just say this because I want people to go look at it. It is. It is. Um, it is a mascot. It is an animal that is often uh, mascotted. So mm -hmm. it could literally be like 27 colleges. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, wait, wait, yeah. when does that come out? Cause that's such a fun, that's such a fun uh, photo. I want to say, um, so the DVD is already out. The hard okay. copy is already out. I know that for sure. Or I was told that at least. Um, my scene I think comes out this week. And so you can find that on Falcon's main website or Hot House's website. They're all kind of shared. Sure. Um, so that's there. Um, as far as my own content, that's all through grantducati.com. Um, you'll find top fan vids, link tree, I mean, not link tree, um, top fan vids, only fans, my Instagram, Twitter, my free only fans, which I just started and I'm starting to promote that. Um, oh God, what else? I think that's just for fans, top fan vids, only fans. I think, I think you yeah, covered it. Yeah, I think yeah. you covered it. And either way, they're going to go to the website, they know what they're doing. Uh, is, there anything yeah. you wanted, is there anything you wanted to tell me that we didn't cover? Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't think so. I think we covered a lot. All right. Um, I'd love to have you back. Is there people? Okay, so this is a new thing that I've been trying to do. I keep forgetting to do it. Um, who would you recommend that I interview? Because that's how I, I got you, by the way. Oh, yeah, I love him. He's a sweetheart. Um, so I'm a huge fan of every time I work with him or, you know, hang out with him. Bo Butler is amazing. Um, I'm sure Max Connor would love to do it as well. Um, Trenton, obviously. <laughs> um, please connect me. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. I would love to do that. Um, um, I would love to see that happen too. I would listen to that. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so this is Sexy People Podcast. Um, we've been responding to all of the flags that we've been getting for over the time, so we changed the name. We're Flexi People Podcast, and now we're we're on YouTube, we're on uh, Google Play, we're on all the places where podcasts are. Wherever you're listening to us, we're on the other thing if you switch platforms. Uh, we have a video from YouTube today, maybe. Um, and if maybe. not, look out for our new page. Um, thank you again to my guest. Please uh, yeah. go follow him, like his stuff. Um, join all of his pages. Uh, give him all of your money. Um, Please. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you for having me.